In this video, I want to share with you my impressions of this SMSL SA400 Class D amplifier. But before that, Welcome to my own devices where I feature loads of modern and vintage audio gear. I'm constantly on the lookout for value and synergy in hi-fi components. Enjoy! But it's been a few uh, years since I've been out looking at garage sales to find any kind of music or hi-fi related gear. Last time I had zero luck. It was just a bunch of garbage. So. We're gonna try it today and see if there's anything around worth buying. I found a garage sale locally, well, not too far away. I was surprised how few there were in my immediate neighborhood. There's usually lots, just a load of garbage. They had a lot of CDs, but it was all garbage. <laughs> it was all garbage CDs, usual tons, dozens of Christmas, big band, easy listening stuff. And he had one, <laughs> <laughs> had one CD I wanted and I opened the case and it was empty. So not not a great start. Let's see if I can find another one. All right, I just checked out an estate sale. That house over there with the red car in front of it. And um, I'm too late. It was picked clean. There was very little left. I found one CD in there and I realized I didn't have any small bills. I didn't, I didn't have 50 cents. I gotta get some change. <laughs> the smallest bill I have is a $20 bill, so forget it. I'm, I'm doing really badly today. All right, I found another garage sale on the, near the beach here. So we're gonna check this out now. Absolutely nothing here at, at whatsoever. Not a single piece of electronic gear or CDs or records, nothing. So struck out on this one. All right, just left an estate sale here, not far from like three or four miles from my house. Nice neighborhood. Finally found a couple items that were worth purchasing. Well, the first thing I got, I found was this Adcom speaker selector box. So you can hook up, I think up to six pair of different speakers up to it. And you can switch between them like at a hi-fi store. You can try out different speakers. So I got that for, uh, and I got that. I got these unopened, unopened cassettes. There's some good SA90s and some lower quality Sony's and a Fuji. Um, unopened. I know people want to buy these old unopened tapes. And I got, oh, there's another Sony. And I got some CDs, and I got these all for 20 bucks. My wife Nikki enjoys listening to music when she's up in her office area. And until now, her primary music source has been Apple Music through her MacBook. And for a few years, it was the headphone jack connected to a pair of M Audio powered speakers was the way she listened to music. A couple of years ago, I brought a Marantz receiver and a pair of PSB floor standing speakers up there as a upgrade, a definite upgrade. A year later, I added an AudioQuest uh, Dragonfly DAC to the mix to, to improve the sound quality a bit more. Now, Nikki's not all that fussy about her audio gear, but she did mention more than once that although she liked the looks of the Marantz receiver, it did take up a lot of desk space. A few months ago, I spotted a PS Audio Sprout 100 available for a very reasonable price locally. And it has everything she needs, a very compact footprint, simple controls, a remote, and she does like the way it looks. For a time after checking out my growing record collection, Nikki started to voice a desire to have her own turntable and listen to her own records and ask if I could hook her up. Obviously, I was delighted by this news, and I promised her one of my spare Technics turntables as soon as she had somewhere to set it up. Then just this week, her son Miles finished building her a really stylish turntable and record stand. I don't know if you saw it, but almost a year ago, I posted a video about the record stand he built for me. 
Then about six months later, I asked him to build me this awesome unit that can accommodate two turntables, electronics, and a couple hundred records. It's, it's really, really nice. It's sturdy. It's a terrific piece of furniture. So check this out. Miles is always looking to improve his woodworking skills and techniques. And for this stand, he really upped his game by making these incredible patterned side panels using the edges of plywood glued together at 90 degree angles or something. I, I really like the elegant taper design and it looks kind of mid-century modern to me. So after we brought up the turntable and receiver, I was really thinking about what's the best way to connect it all together. And Nikki did really like the Sprout and she liked the remote control, but it would look silly inside that new stand. So this is what I think is the best solution for her. The turntable is connected to the phono input of the Morantz 2230, and this model has preamp outputs, which I connected to the analog inputs of the Sprout. And the, the MacBook is connected to the Sprout via USB for when she wants to listen to Apple Music. She just has to turn the input selector to analog to listen to records. Yes, the Sprout has a phono input, but we really wanted to incorporate the Morantz because it looks cool and it'll add a little bit of that vintage flavor. You know, I've owned a few amplifiers and receivers over the years, and and all of them have been have been class A B amplifier architecture. I do own a shit Valhalla 2 tube headphone amplifier that I believe is class A designed, and it's a nice little unit that gets really hot when left on for a couple of hours, and and it's only producing a fraction of a watt of power. I've never owned any Class D amplifiers until just a few months ago. You saw that versatile little PS Audio Sprout 100 in the previous segment. That's a Class D amp, and I really like it. It's pretty powerful with a clean sound quality. It's a bit forward in tone, but there's no glare or harshness that I have detected. It's a great match for the warm-sounding PSB speakers in that room. I've also had this SMSL SA400 amp for a few months, courtesy of APOS Audio, and I've been using it in here, swapping it around between different systems and uh, you know receivers and amps and stuff, and, and I'm not going to explore all of its features, just the ones that I find particularly interesting. Let's just say that the vast majority of amplifiers out there are, uh, and for in history, have been of a class AB design. There's a very good reason for that. They retain some of the nice sonic advantages of class A without getting hot enough to cook an egg on. And they could still generate a good amount of heat, which is why you see them with good sized heat sinks inside and out. Now, class D, the relative newcomer to hi-fi by comparison, is by far the most efficient amplifier design. They are designed to run much cooler than the other two topologies. There's less energy going to waste. The power in a Class D amp is designed to switch on and off very rapidly, like 30,000 times a second. They say that's what makes them more efficient. And that's why they can be built in such small, compact cases. Check out how small it is. It's a fraction of the size of the other amplifiers and receivers in my systems. I mean, I calculated that you could fit eight of these inside one of those conventionally sized units. It has a nice color display that gives you the volume level and its internal temperature. It's actually, it actually has a fan that goes on when it gets warmer than 65 degrees centigrade inside. In my opinion, it's actually a cross between a dedicated amp and an integrated amp. It will, it will accept three different types of inputs, one pair of RCA, one pair of balanced XLR, and Bluetooth. To me, that's a bit unusual, but probably fairly commonplace in the modern world of home audio. It has, it has a remote even, it, albeit a, a cheesy one that's very similar to the ones that are used by topping. And it has all the same kind of basic functions. 
It also has tone controls for bass, mid-range, and treble, a few preset EQ settings, and a subwoofer out connection. So I tried out the SMSL SA400 in this system here, which for the purposes of this evaluation includes the 2021 Blue Sound node running Amazon HD digital streaming and some RIP CDs that are on a tiny USB drive. The DAC is a topping D70S and the preamps were a Shit Saga Plus and a vintage Adcom GFP1. The speakers I hooked up are my ProAC Response 2.5s, some Celestian SL6S's, and modern Triangle Borea Bro 3s. And I tried out a few different amps, but for this video I'm just going to focus on the big Acoustat Transnova Twin 200 stereo amp from 1981. The Transnova Twin 200, or the TNT 200, was developed in the early 1980s by the speaker company Acoustat, and they were dissatisfied by the available choices of amps to drive their inefficient electrostatic speakers. The TNT 200 was designed to handle a wide range of impedance loads, and can deliver truckloads of current with its all MOSFET transistor design. It has great muscle and impressive transparency for a 40-year-old amplifier. The previous owner told me that it was rebuilt a few years ago by Acoustat's former engineer. The only downsides that I have encountered with it is the alarming thump that you get when you power it up and an audible amount of background noise or hiss when you get when your ears get close to a speaker. The Acoustat amp is a great match with the two-way Pro-X. It generates excellent low bass and mid-range that they could reproduce exceedingly well. They're not particularly power hungry at 86 dB and it's a very pleasing and balanced combo. I'm very enamored with these speakers and I really can't ever find a fault with them. The SMSL did very well with the Pro-Ax as well, but the forward nature of the upper mid-range was quite noticeable and not so pleasing to me. The bass was not quite as deep as the Acoustats, but it was very controlled and tuneful. The Celestian SL6S is considered a classic compact British sealed box design with one of the earliest metal dome tweeters to hit the market. They are very well constructed, and what they do best is disappear and produce a wide and deep soundstage. They excel in the mid-range with high frequencies that are very clear and neutral sounding. No sibilance or glare to be found. These speakers are fairly limited in the bass department, but the low frequencies that they are able to produce sound great. Also, you will encounter a nasty crack if you try to push them too loud with bass heavy tracks. They are a bit power hungry with a sensitivity rating of 84 dB. The Celestian sounded great with both amplifiers. The Acoustat strength is in the low and mid range frequencies and they wrung out every ounce of bass from those small boxes. But there was definitely some magic happening between the SA400 and the Celestians. The Class D amp has, a very, has an overall very pleasant tone. However, it does have a relatively pronounced upper mid range that really suited those speakers. I sat there and thought, oh yes, that's the ticket. The speaker's basic neutrality became more engaging and lively. Then I decided to get out a pair of modern affordable speakers, the Triangle Borea Bro 3s as they're called. These are delightful stand mount speakers that sound great with anything I've connected them to. I haven't listened to them in a couple of months and I was reminded again by why they get such great reviews. I would have to say they are still one of the most outstanding bargains in home audio. They loved the SA400 amp. The Bro 3's tweeters are technically considered to be a horn loaded design and they've been described as had to have somewhat elevated treble because of that. And yes, it's a little bit elevated but not overly bright or irritating to my ears. Just the right amount of detail and air. Playing the Acoustat through the triangles gave the music a stronger, low-frequency foundation. It plays with a depth and authority that none of my other amplifiers can match. It's, an, it's very impressive to me, and it's 
not rolled off at all. There's plenty of resolution on display here as well. It just doesn't have that nice rise in the upper mid-range that the Class D SA400 has. You may have surmised by now that I've become a bit of a Class D enthusiast. There, there's been so much negativity I've heard in the past that Class D was the inferior amp topography and that they're only suitable for subwoofers and budget systems or whatever. And simply based on my recent experiences, I respectfully disagree with those opinions. I would say that in the right setup, I could easily live with an amp like the SA400. Now this is not a state-of-the-art Class D amplifier, but it's a rather nice middle-of-the-road model that's priced at $660. And now at that price, would I recommend it to someone looking for a new amplifier? Now that's a tough call. It has a lot of interesting features, but features that I would personally likely never use. The limited number of inputs gives it a disadvantage against other like integrated amps and such. But if you're pressed for physical space and only need one set of XLR, RCA, or Bluetooth, and you use Bluetooth, it's a great choice. Also, if you believe that you need EQ settings and tone controls, then this will make you happy as well. Now, if you think of it as a straight, single RCA or XLR input power amplifier connected to a preamp like, like I did here, that's a different proposition. Now, it has plenty of power to suit most systems, and I think it sounds very good. At no point did I find it unpleasant to listen to. Based strictly on sound quality, I enjoyed it tremendously here in this environment. However, if you are just seeking a straightforward two-channel power amp or integrated, in my opinion, there are better solutions out there for the price in the new and vintage marketplace. Thanks for watching my video all the way to the end. Much appreciated. I'd like to take this opportunity to announce that I've started a Patreon page where I plan to post exclusive content, ad-free videos very soon. An ad -free video. And if you like that, that, that kind of stuff interests you, or if you simply want to help support my efforts here, please visit patreon.com slash my own devices, and I'll put a link below. Thanks. Thanks again, everyone.